Charles II, Part Two. The Long Lease of Pleasant Days. By Mike Walker. When I was a boy, everything was simpler. There was the king, and then there was everyone else. God save the king! There was ceremonial. God save the king! And then there was parliament. God damn the king! And then there was war. And there was everyone else. And the king. Guilty! 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 And then there wasn't the king anymore. And then, after a certain amount of negotiation, manipulation, calculation, and time, a grateful nation, fed up with the hard asses of the Commonwealth, welcomed the king back. An act of indemnity and oblivion was passed. Speaks for itself, except for the regicides, living. And dead. Behold the great traitor, Oliver Cromwell. Oh, oh, Holy God, oh, he's liquid. Oh, oh, we'll have the bastard's head anyway. Oh, if we can find it. There was a war with the Dutch, who should have been our friends. <laughs> Who knew it was the same in Dutch? And secret talks with the French. Bonjour, bonjour. Who should have been our enemies? <laughs> and then along came a real enemy: <laughs> the plague. The court left London. Most Londoners couldn't. The Roman Catholics said it was God's warning to sinners. So did the Protestants, for that matter. Others said it was the rats. I went with the rats. And the rats finally went with. Fire! Fire! Go save us! Fire! The Great Fire of London. I fought the flames with my brother. Hot work, Jimmy. Bloody hot. We built a new city. We're still building it. London wasn't rebuilt in a day, but it's being built around the monument. My monument. A mighty stone shaft thrusting 202 feet into the sky of England, topped with a golden. Well, you get the picture. And then, after all the conniption of the plague and the fire, I hope this little bark of ours, this Britain, would find at last a peaceful harbour. The future seemed serene as we sailed forward into. The future. You know, if I hadn't been king, I would have liked to be a sailor. Ah, if I hadn't been king, I would have liked to have been a sailor. I know. <laughs> you're lucky, Jimmy. You have the time, and you're good at it. Perhaps we should all have been tradesmen. Old Hyde once said to me, "Our tragedy was that we couldn't. We were bound to kingship." Well, you at any rate. I don't bank on it. I could die at any time, and. Yeah. Yes. There's no prince. No prince, except Monmouth. Monmouth is a bastard. My sentiments entirely. He <laughs> reminds me of me when I was that age. He's headstrong. He's a bit of a goer. He's a believer. Hasn't had all that knocked out of him. He does have a tendency to go off like a bolting horse at times. And he says you are married to his mother. Well, you know that's not true, Jimmy.、But、does he? We might as well believe that white is black and that day is Say night. Hello. Can you see? What ship must head? Pray the Dutch haven't changed their minds. But they'll do that sooner than change their wallets. Peace will hold. We've paid enough for it. Mast head. French colours, sir. Captain, be so good as to beat to quarters. I belay that, Captain. Plot us a course for the Frenchman, if you will. We're not at war, Jimmy. The French are our friends. No need to appear sloppy. It'll be all right. Well, you're the king. What exactly are we doing? We're a little early. I'm confused. Don't be. 
Monmouth will never be the Prince of Wales. I have one successor, and he's standing beside me. I will always stand beside you, Charles. You know that. We're Stuarts, and you will live for... As long as I live. And then you'll be in the saddle and see what it's like riding this damned horse. But, um, <clears throat> what if, if I were to tell you... No that... problems today. Today, the sky is blue, the sun is warm. Mm -hmm. The channel runs like warm silk beneath a lover's hand. Charles, I, I, I think, I, think I, I should... No, Jimmy. Why are we here? May I come in, mademoiselle? The passage is somewhat cramped for a man of my height. Your Majesty, I, I had not expected. My friends say I am a master of the unexpected. Not too much so, I hope, sir. I am at your command. But I have not given any commands, sir. I thought I would surprise you, my lady. Since our last meeting, though it was barely an acquaintance, I have thought about you often, which is why I invited you... To come as a guest of the King of England. All this trouble for one little lady. I wonder why. And I wonder why you accept it. After all, it is another country. May I? Oh, please, do sit, sir. Shall I send for something? Ah. No, nope. I have all I want at present. How is His Majesty of France? I am told he is content. I am sure he wishes His Majesty of England all content as well. He is confident that the good relation existing between our two nations will be both stable and long-lasting. Hmm. Well, now that's out of the way. Louise, if I may call you such. Louise. When I say I've thought of you often since we last met, what I mean is that you have rarely been out of my mind. You haunt me, Louise, like a delightful phantom, a dream of loveliness, a tantalizing... Sir, you have the better of me. I certainly hope to, my dear, for you are... But I am a virgin. Observe! Oh. I apologize. The roof is very low. Think nothing of it. I will make you the queen of my heart if you... Only permit me to escort you ashore and show you... Of your art. There are many who say the king's art is a cheap coin. Well, the king's policies may be mixed with the alloy of pragmatism and self-interest, but his heart is pure gold, and I offer it to you, Louise, with all the respect and love and what every virgin should devoutly wish for, gentle experience in the world. I am not certain I understand. Let me take your hand and walk with you through the garden. The garden of earthly delights. But I am a Roman Catholic. Well, that's why there's confession. You must know that my religion is of great importance to me. As mine is to me, Louise. Have no fear. No one as delicious as you should ever fear anything at all. Majesty. Oh, Jack, my dear boy, walk with me. <laughs> not that, dear. We've not seen each other in a six month, Father. I've been busy. Oh, collecting a new mistress. Doesn't the Queen object? The Queen is no business of yours. Oh, is that so? There are those who say my mother should have been the Queen. Hush now, let's not go there again. Let's. Jack. I love you dearly. I loved your mother. You swived my mother and deserted her, and she died alone. Enough. Or not nearly enough, Dad. Pater noster, qui es in celis sanctificato nomen tuum. My dear, I interrupt. Oh, no, sir, it is no matter. Thank you, Father. <sighs> I'm sure it's a very great trouble, having this dreadful heretic for a husband. You are such an old soul, my sweet. I know you will come round to the right way in the end. <laughs> if only it were that simple. Ah, but it is. One jump and you will be home. I'm home whenever I'm with you. A home without a family. But a loving heart. Even so. 
But you have sons aplenty. Yes, and one in particular... Monmouth. Ah, dear Jack, so handsome, so headstrong. I have a feeling, just a feeling, he's getting ready to make his move. And since I am your weak point, you have come to warn me? Well, as I say, it's just a feeling. Forewarned is... is forearmed? Hmm. Have a care. That's all. <laughs> Does the Queen know about her yet? Didn't say anything. As always, bless her. And Mademoiselle Louise. Oh, God, she's delightful. She's a dream, Jimmy. You know I call her Fubs. Fubs? Mm, because she's so plump. Ah, uh, yes, yes, she's quite... Uh, Fubs. Somehow a lovely woman makes the world so much a better place. Even those dreary buggers in Parliament seem less of a trial when I think of darling Fubs. You know she was a virgin. Really? Are you sure? Trust me. Oh, by God, she's a natural. Charles, I know you're delighted, but really, it is the state opening of Parliament, and they do like you to have your mind on present business. Well, this time there's nothing in the wind, so we might actually agree. Ah, uh, Charles, I, 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 I need to... We're here. Come along, Jimmy. <sighs> And the words I spoke on the glorious day of the Restoration to the first Parliament I was privileged to address, I repeat today, I am your friend. You have no greater friend than I. And no greater enemy than the Catholic Queen. Yeah. Yeah. I do not think Lord Shaftesbury or his partisans understand either the word order or the word respect. Maybe Mr. Speaker should... Yeah. Yeah. Freedom of speech. Oh, gentlemen, members, my lords. Onwards, Catholic succession. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley Cooper has ideas above his station in the political gutter. Yeah. Order, order. I must set the noble lord right in that matter, for I found the gutter already full of Tory turds. <laughs> All these questions and disputes will be opened before you, before us all. My lords, honourable members, we have a nation to run, a nation that looks to us to act responsibly. Let us together shoulder that great responsibility and go forward together as one nation united under God. But not the bloody Pope of Rome! <sighs> Why do they have to be so bloody disobliging to the Queen, Halifax? It's not the Queen, Majesty. It's all about party now. They hate your party and your followers. We hate the Whigs. I say a plague on both their houses. Huh. <laughs> did you hear what I just said? Jimmy, did you... Charles, uh, um... Shakespeare, do you... Could uh, we have the room, uh, Halifax? Uh, gentlemen? My lord. Uh, that thing. Thing? What thing? The thing. I was going to mention when we were at sea. The, 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 the thing no one else has mentioned to you yet. Hmm? I, um... Oh, do get on with it, Jimmy. I'm eating fubs and I'm as randy as a polecat. I converted to Roman Catholicism. You did what? And I'm terribly sorry, but... But, you see, my, my conscience, my, my, my belief... My ass, Jimmy. God would not be denied. It's my bloody ass that's hanging out for a damn good kicking and you've just arranged for me to drop my drawers and bend over in the boot factory! Giles, a large one, if you please. <sighs> mm. Will there be anything else? Nothing, thank you, Giles. Just peace and quiet. Your Majesty. Mm. Ah. Mm. 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 Ah. Mm. Mm. 
Your Majesty, the go. Just Duchess... now. What is fubs? Barbara, my dear, some wine. You look flushed. What is fubs? Fubs? Are you deaf now, as well as unavailable? I don't wish to have to remind you that I am the king. I will have respect, Barbara. It's that fat French cow, isn't it? I will not be spoken to in this manner. Oh, ho, ho. he will not be spoken to in this manner. You have been spoken to in this manner, my dear. What are you going to do about it? Rush off to Mademoiselle and tell her your mistress, the king's mistress, the mother of the king's bastards, five of them, is being nasty to you because you've taken up with a baby-faced, squinting, simpering, self-righteous, fat, 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 fat French whore. Oh, I hate these bloody clocks. Why are there so many bloody clocks? Why do they all keep different time? Why do you need so many clocks? Oh, oh Barbara, my dear, please. I am your mistress, and I will not be supplanted by this French lettuce. French lettuce? Limp, yellowy, tasteless, and utterly unsustaining. You, you see, they're predictable. You wind them up and they do what they're supposed to do. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Oh. Oh. And she has the ear of Louis. So basically, Charles, you're sticking it in the ear of the King of France. Mm. Is that a new way of making love or war? Mm. I suppose it's a change from paying off those Dutch buggers, if only by the port of entry. No, what can I... No, wait! No, wait! What... <laughs> Can I say? Goodbye, Louise. It was nice having you, but frankly, my dear, once was enough. Ah, to be here, to be with you, it's so peaceful I can begin to find myself again amongst all the confusion and the busyness. Ah, and this court is so very busy, Majesty. Always the mouses scurry here and there. No, I've known it all my life, Fubs. It's the air I breathe. Try this. My pâtissière made it this afternoon. Mm. A custard <laughs> baked within sweet dough. It's Basque. Mm. Oh, Fubs. <laughs> Fubs, you temptress. You'll make me very fat. Oh, you think I am fat? No, I think you're perfect. That woman, she says I am fat. Well, I say thank God for plump women. Stop this cruelty. You think I am a fat French woman. I cannot be in the same place as her. The Duchess of Cleveland? The adulteress, Mrs. Palmer. Barbara Villiers? She has more names than Melusine. <laughs> the devil's daughter. And I dare say, more lovers, if truth be told. And a whole brood of children. Well, yes, children do happen when... She is a married woman. I do not like her. She has no manners and a very loud mouth which can be heard all around the court. Well, the stallion has many... The stallion may have as many actresses and three guinea whores as he wishes. But he may only ever have one lady in his bed at a time. But, Fubs... I will leave you now, sir. Please, enjoy the warm custard pie, for I may assure you, it is all you will be getting from me tonight. It's a custard tart! I assure your majesty, I know the difference between a pie and a tart. She'll break from cover presently, I can feel it in my water, majesty. Then we'll wait on you, Master Huntsman. Father! Thank you for your invitation. Ah, always glad to see you, Jack. I know how you enjoy the hunt. Except you didn't invite me. Uh, are you avoiding me? I'll never say such a thing. Oh, well, uh, I just did. Don't be awkward. It's a beautiful day. The game is up and you're looking in fine purple. Oh, we have to talk. We are talking. About the succession. What is there to say? It's settled. Is it? Your Uncle James is... A Roman Catholic. I do wish you'd stop interrupting me. If nothing else, it's extremely ill-mannered in the presence of the king. Forgive me, Your Majesty. 
My only concern is this nation and its future. That is why it needs an Anglican to govern. Oh, tell me that's not true. That's not true. That's a lie. You can't call the king a liar, Jack. Uncle James, how nice to see you two. Majesty, I apologize unreservedly. I do, however, believe you are mistaken in your belief that this nation will ever support a Catholic monarch. She breaks! She Later, breaks! Jack. I'm your son, Dad. I'm the only son you've got. Well, that's not true. Barbara and half a dozen I am the other... only legitimate son you've got, and that barren queen of yours is never going to give you another. Jack, you're a bastard. <laughs> you married my mother. That's nonsense. Really? He married her before abandoning her to die in Belgium. Is that telling it how it is? Do I have to say it again? It isn't what you say, Father. It's what happened. And if it never happened? It isn't even what happened. It's what people believe happened. And the people believe me. Jack, have a care. You always were too hasty. They know me. They like me. They'll follow me in a manner they'll never, ever follow you, James. We've been left behind by the hunt. He's vanished over the hill. I have friends. I have a party. Remember that. We will talk further. Uncle, good day to you. And um, they won't have you, you know. This country will not swallow a Roman Catholic king ever again. Ha! I have always felt, forgive me, Charles, that boy needs a damn good slapping. Yeah, I suppose I treat him too leniently. I feel guilty about Lucy. Oh, she was a gold digger. She was the first. And he's my firstborn son, bastard or no, and he's right. He does have a following amongst the people. The Whigs will be only too happy to use him. I haven't helped, have I? No, Jimmy, you have not. Is Monmouth going to be a problem? <sighs> we shall see. You were brought up in the Anglican faith. I was, my lord. And then converted to Rome? I did, sir. And when in that misguided faith? I became a member of the Order of the Society of Jesus. A Jesuit? Yes, my lord, that's just what I became. And you continued in that state until... Last year! when I recognized the gross error of my ways. Uh, you returned to the faith of your fathers? Praise the Lord, I did. And whilst you were a Jesuit, you maintained you were part of a grand conspiracy. I was indeed, my lord. A malign and terrible scheme to... to I hardly dare say the words, sir. Uh, this committee... Understands your reluctance, Mr. Oates. These are terrible things. But you may be comforted in the knowledge that what you say here is protected, as are you, by the powers and customs of this house. Speak out, sir, clearly and courageously. A scheme to poison His Majesty the King and cast down the Anglican Church in this nation. But surely, Mr. Oates, the, the plotters knew the king, God save him, was protected. But not from his own brother's Roman Catholic doctor. And not from the Roman Catholic queen herself. I have in my possession documents proving that no less than a dozen prominent Roman Catholics were involved in this strategy under the command of James, Duke of York, and... Queen Catherine of Braganza, which I hardly need remind this committee, is a hotbed of Catholic conspiracy. Well, the angry buzz of the multitude is one of the bloodiest sounds in the world. Mr Oates has the popular ear, then. <laughs> Mr Anthony Ashley Cooper and the Whigs have made certain of that. Newspapers, pamphlets, posters everywhere, publishers, accusations. But it's unbelievable. And so is the resurrection. <sighs> this Titus Oates, he looks like a malign toad, a fat malign toad. Well, then he looks the part of Rome's secret agent, straight from hell, still dripping with bile. <laughs> Ashley Cooper knows his theatricals. Oates is perfectly cast. What does he want? He wants to be famous. He's a no-one who wants to be a someone. 
Don't suppose we can pay him off? Well, you could make him a Marquis for services to the kingdom. <laughs> Perhaps not. More to the point, Majesty. Is what Ashley Cooper and the Whigs want? Or who they don't and do? Your brother James out and your son Monmouth in. I have to protect James. I imagine that's what they're counting on. It's exactly what Parliament did to my father. They attacked him through Strafford, and when he gave them the Earl, he gave them his own head, too. Well, everyone knows history nowadays, I'm afraid. Are you, Halifax? What? Afraid. Yes, Majesty. I'm very afraid. When Oates came hopping through the door of the house, I should think Ashley Cooper couldn't believe his luck. We'd blocked him on the exclusion of James, and now this toad has given him the key to unlock all our legislation. We won't block him again. Ashley Cooper is smelling blood. That duck waddles like your newest mistress, Charles. And quacks like my oldest. Don't tell Monmouth that. Oldest living mistress. My God, you are serious today. <sighs> They're coming after me, Barbara. Then maybe you should cut the French pudding loose. I like her. What's to like? She's a Provencal housewife. Yes. What? Well, that's what I like. Going home at the end of the day, taking off my boots, having a glass, some supper, sitting around chatting. She's nice. So that's why I had to go. You have changed. I'm old, I'm bald, I'm tired. No more Mr. Five Times a Night? Not so much. Sometimes we just cuddle. Eh, not always, mind you. You know people say she's a French spy? That she reports back to Louis through the French embassy? <sighs> what can I say? A bad time is coming. I need calm in the home. Because as sure as Hades is hot, it's not going to be calm outside for much longer. So why do you stay with her when it would be more convenient simply to send her packing? Good God. <laughs> You've fallen in love like a 16-year-old boy. So, what else can I say? For love, nothing. For the convenience of sending me packing, 50,000. Per annum? Of course. And Castlemaine. I've always liked Ireland. Hmm. Countess. Why not? And no interdictions on... Yeah, as long as anyone you bed stays clear of London. I'll be discreet. The children? Will not lose by it, trust me. We had some high old times, didn't we? <laughs> we did, we did. I'll pray for calm. Charles. Good night. Good night. Who's there? I see. Who's there? Show yourself, sir. I am a magistrate. I demand. Oh, God, God, help me. Lord Shaftesbury, I must inform this house that last evening Sir Edmund Godfrey, a well-respected magistrate, a stalwart defender of the faith, our faith, England's faith was brutally shot down in the street. Can there now be any doubt in any mind about the reality of the terror sponsored by Rome? Can there now be any doubt in any mind that this nation is under attack? Can there now be any doubt in any mind that this House, representing the people of England, needs to bring the forces of law and order directly under our control. Oh! 
I call for a vote. Yes, a vote. There has been no debate on the matter. It is quite likely that the unfortunate man vote. was killed as the vote. result of a robbery that went vote. 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 Mr. Speaker. Vote. 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 <gasps> what is this? Are we to be killed in our beds? It's the gunpowder treason, Fubs. Treason? They tried to blow up my grandfather. Catholics, you see, they wanted to blow up Parliament. It is a strange thing to celebrate. I do not recall it last year. Well, last year there was no panic in the streets. This year they see Catholic assassins hiding under every stone. Oh, come inside, quickly. They see Catholic whores in every bed. Well, there are a lot of you. I, I mean, I don't mean that at all. I mean Catholics. And why not? Well, you know, um, glass of wine? You are having supper with me. I shall offer the wine to you. <laughs> Was I so very angry? Oh. Uh, there's a terrible attraction and chaos for human beings. I've tried to live my life according to reason as far as I can. I don't know how long that's going to last. Then let us love while we may, my dear. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> while we may. Do you want supper? I want you. <laughs> now! <laughs> <laughs> All rise for His Majesty the King. Please. <laughs> Thank you for coming to see me, Mr. Oates. I seek only to do my duty, sir. You think it your duty to stir up intolerance and fear? I wish that that was not the case, sir, but I can only speak the truth as I know it to be. Is it not a fact that you are allied to Lord Shaftesbury and the Whig Party, also to the radical tendency of said party, the Green Ribbon Club? I am allied only to the truth and the preservation of your majesty's life. And Do you say you know that Roman Catholic agents killed Magistrate Godfrey? I do, sir. Well, I wish you would tell me how you are so certain, since you were not present, I take it. Only two days before, the magistrate had spent three hours with me, during which time I laid out the whole of the Catholic conspiracy as I know it. And I know it! He straightway established the whereabouts of your brother's doctor, Mr. Coleman, and of a number of agents of Rome, Jesuits all, whose names I opened to him. He was preparing warrants of arrest and examination against these people. No such warrants have been found among his effects. This fact was known. Why else was he struck down? It is quite clear, Majesty. The evidence, the warnings, the warrants, and the assassination. There can be no other explanation. Magistrate Godfrey had many enemies, men he had sentenced... And until this time, none of them had attacked him. But the day after I revealed the conspiracy... Post-hack, ergo propter-hack, if I may say so, Majesty. I do not find either your execrable Latin or your argument convincing. <laughs> With respect, perhaps that is because you do not want to find it so. After all, your own wife, your own mistress... Your own brother are all... Hey, no, sir. You may not speak to the king in that manner. My Lord Halifax, I speak with the sword of truth and the shield... Enough of, my... of this pomposity. What proof do you have of these chimeras? I have the names of the guilty men. <laughs> and who are they? I have this morning delivered them to the parliamentary committee sitting under the chairmanship of Lord Shaftesbury. If I forbear to do so here, sir, I hope you will forgive me, but this court is a hotbed of the enemy. Mr. Oates, do you know what a hotbed is? It... I... Uh... No, I do not. I do. My gardener grows pineapples in one. It is a raised bed of earth, which is heated from below by a pit full of fresh horse shite. Your hotbed of rumour and innuendo is no more or less than shite! I understand your majesty's feelings on this, but... Enough, sir, enough. 
I have had enough. Get him out. Get him oh, out. Oh, true fallacy. Let him come here. One here will constant be. The bloody man's more powerful than I am, Jimmy. They've arrested the peers he named. All decent men, all harmless. For God's sake, Petrie's 80 years old. It's a trial of strength. They're pushing you closer to the edge with every session of Parliament. You have to push back, Charles. Show them your kid. Make it clear that Ashley Cooper and the Whigs want... To Anyone but you, Jimmy. Do you expect me to step down? No, of course not. Once that happens, the whole principle of monarchy becomes meaningless. The throne will be no more than a concession. Besides, uh, we'd get Monmouth. <sighs> As it is, I sometimes wonder if we'll be the last true kings of Britain. Well, so be it. We will be it whilst I have breath in my body and a brain in my head. On the other hand, it doesn't help matters that your Dr. Coleman is very, very far from being an innocent man. The bloody Whigs will say anything to get a Protestant king under Parliament's thumb. But it's true, yes? Halifax has seen the man's letters. Indiscreet, stupid, dangerous stuff. Granted, he, he, he was naive. You're giving them a weapon to use against us. What are you saying? Coleman has to go down, Jimmy, and I rather fear some of the peers will do so as well. Does that mean what I think it means? If you think it means they'll be tried, found guilty and executed, then yes. You can't let that happen. I can't stop it happening. You're the king. Forbid it. And if they resist? Arrest them. On what charge? Halifax will find something. I will move against them, but only within the law. Once I step outside it, I'm done. <laughs> Coleman doesn't deserve death for, for being an idiot. The peers are almost certainly innocent of any treason. How can you live with yourself if you allow this to happen? It's what kings have to do, Jimmy. You really need to learn that. I hope I never do. We'll shortly be coming up on a frigate of the Navy. I do still <laughs> control the Navy. I want you to transfer to it. And go to Scotland for a while. What? I will not run away from these people. I need room to move. I need my most valuable pieces well protected. And, Jimmy, do I need to remind you I am the king and you will do what you are bloody well told? This committee calls the Duke of Monmouth. <sighs> I am ready to answer any questions the House may have, Mr. Cooper. You maintain that you are the true heir of the king. Since my mother was married to Charles Stuart when he was in exile in Holland, I hold that to be the case. Uh, I might also add, if I may... If, please, my lord, go ahead. I believe that by the popular acclamation of the people of this country, I am the natural and true heir to the throne. There is indeed a, a considerable groundswell of opinion in the country supporting the claims of the young Protestant Duke. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, above all things, sir, uh, I am constant in my devotion to the Anglican Church and in my implacable hostility to the Church of Rome and all her works. Oh, and in my willingness to be always instructed by this house. Thank you, my lord. The committee has no further questions at this time. Yeah, very good. I am praying for you, Charles, and for dear James, too. How does it go? <sighs> Nip and tuck, my dear. The Whigs are bent on reform, as they see it, and that entails an Anglican monarch. And? Why don't you say it? A royal divorce. <sighs> There are grounds, there is precedent. It would be the practical thing to do, and I could not find it within myself to blame you for doing so. Well, no more could I find it within myself to do it, Catherine. I will not have you touched. You're a good and decent woman, and God knows you've put up with more than enough from me and carried it off with grace and dignity. <sighs> now, kiss me and wish me luck. Mm. All the luck in the world, my dear king. But is there no way to stop this attack upon the throne? Well, we have made Parliament a great thing. Can we complain if it now wields a great club and threatens to beat out our brains? Well, actually, yes, I can. I like my brains. <laughs> 
You cannot send them down? Dissolve them? Believe me, I've tried. But if I get within a long mile of calling both houses together and appearing before them in my state robes, they will melt away like snow in June. And I will have nothing. Mind yourself, Majesty. All the way, lads. You're making good progress. As long as the weather holds, sir. Now, if you'll step clear. Of course. It'll be very fine, Your Majesty. Your new observatory. I hope it will open some of the mysteries of the cosmos, Lord Shaftesbury. Has a fine elevation. I imagine the um, the instruments will be of the finest too. The finest I can afford. Uh, perhaps, sir, I might add an addendum to that. The, the finest the country can afford, since, with respect, your money is our money. I'm sensible of it, sir. Granted by Parliament. Of course. And we are all in favour of, uh, how shall I put it, the the unravelling of mysteries. Indeed. However, you you did not call me here solely to admire your fine new observatory. I called you to appeal to your sense of national unity and patriotism. Monmouth will be a disaster of this country if he ever rules. You must see that, my lord. Your party must see it. My party sees a monarch who, with respect, believes he can gain what he wants by force majeure, or causes fortuitous, if you prefer the Latin. Uh, we've, um, we've had enough of that in this country, sir. That has never been my position, and you know it. I've worked with Parliament on an equal basis since the Restoration. Granted, relations have not always been amicable, but isn't that the point? We have a middle ground where the issues are debated and the best solution arrived at. Not the perfect solution, nor the complete just the human best we can do. Well, sir, I believe we can do better. <sighs> I ask you not to call this debate on the exclusion bill and not to pursue your aim of gaining control of the forces of the Crown. <laughs> it's not up to me, sir. It is the will of Parliament, of the people, that will decide the course of events. You are the leader of the Whigs. They'll listen to your wise advice. And my advice is that a Catholic succession is impossible. It, it will not happen. Don't be too sure, my lord. If... I say no more. If Your Majesty were thinking of heading off this debate by the simple procedure of proroguing Parliament, I would remind you that both houses must be gathered before the throne and that the correct order of ceremony must be observed. And that were you to think of such a move... Before you could make it, I would have the time to indict your brother James as a Roman Catholic under the recusancy laws, and your mistress Louise, the Duchess of Portsmouth, is she now, as a common whore plying her trade against the civil law. Your Majesty, we will have a Protestant succession. I bid you. Good day. It's a charming town, Fubs. You'll like it. But it is not London. <laughs> You're absolutely right. It is not London, and that at this moment is a great advantage. I agree, however. There are marshes and low airs around the town. And damp at this time of year. I would prefer... Rheumatics and fevers abound, I'm told. Is it really that bad? I fear so. <laughs> Then why? I have allies there, and I'll feel more comfortable if you're surrounded by our friends. And if you were to fall ill, shall we say? Oh, <laughs> from the marshes and the low air. Mm, quite dangerously ill, shall we say? So that your doting Charles will fly to your side. Majesty... Should you be here? You're debating the future of the monarchy, Halifax. Where else should I be? I'll watch from cover, like a hunter. Who's also the prey? <sighs> Is it cut and dried? Well, nothing's done until it's done, Majesty. I'm not the only one who fears a Whig supremacy. A lot of people didn't like Ashley Cooper's threat against your brother and the Duchess of Portsmouth. She's been jeered at in the streets, Halifax, as a French whore. And there are a lot of people in this country who do like what he's done. But they don't sit in the house, and they don't have a vote on this motion. Well, 
Here we go. There are two questions facing us. Can this House vote for an exclusion bill which will ensure a Catholic monarch never takes the throne of this nation? And if so, should we? Yeah. Lord Shaftesbury has introduced so many changes and bills that it is hard to know where we are. Yeah. You have no answer, my lord, then I do. Precedent dictates this house may, good sense dictates that it must. Yeah. You ask the house to vote for loss of stability, conflict and chaos. Yeah. I ask the house to vote for the people's will in this matter. We already have the Test Act which ensures only professing Anglicans may take public office. This is just the next step. Will not chaos at home encourage those very Roman Catholic powers abroad to meddle in our affairs, yeah. even invade? Yeah. Are we to live in fear of what France and Spain might do? Once we are part of a solid Protestant alliance, we will have the power to see off any enemy. And yet, if we pass this bill, will not a, a host of evil children follow in its wake? The, the promotion of the Duke of Monmouth? A forced royal divorce? Nothing is certain. We may well look to the Low Countries for a successor. <laughs> if, if Orange or Monmouth, then any son of the royal loins, it becomes a free-for-all. Yeah. For it seems to me that the Duke of Monmouth has no greater claim upon the throne than the children of Barbara, Marquess of Castlemaine. Yeah, yeah. There is evidence clear and plain that the Duke of Monmouth's mother, Mrs Lucy Walters, was married to the Prince of Wales. Well... Whigs defeated by 33 votes. Uh, you made it happen, Halifax. Uh, the Tories were scared of allowing the Whigs too much influence. The Whigs were scared of allowing Ashley Cooper and the Green Ribbon faction too much power. They were all scared of chaos at home. So we're holding them in check, at least. Uh, they've put the leash on Cooper, but they're still after you. There's the Army-Navy Bill to ratify, a Royal Divorce Bill, which they will introduce... A Declaration of Rights, a Regency Bill excluding James in favour of his daughters. I won't have to ratify any of them. They can't force me. Do you want another war? Whilst Parliament sits, they have the whip hand. Mm. But, but if Parliament w were dissolved, I could rule without them. Yeah, but since Parliament has to vote you the money you need and you can't rule without money, they still have the whip hand. Unless, Halifax, I can both find the money and somehow dissolve Parliament. <laughs> Even Solomon couldn't do that. <laughs> I have to go to Oxford. What? It is not a good time to be away. Where does Parliament's power reside? Well, obviously, been the members of the Commons and Lords. And not in the building. They can sit anywhere. Please convey to the loyal members of both houses my deep respects and ask them to shift their seats to Oxford, where the King has been urgently called because his beloved Mistress Louise is dangerously ill. And uh, tell them he'll ratify the Army-Navy Bill. You know the form. Just get them there. Ah. I'll try. They won't like it. Tell them I am minded to listen to all their concerns and, as far as possible, make them content. All? Oh, are you sure? I'm sure. Oh, and tell them we meet in the Sheldonian, where I will open my mind to them. <laughs> It'll be crowded. They won't like that either. <laughs> This is an imposition, Halifax. Come now, Tony. You know the king is led by his cod. It seems to me this gallivanting underlines the fact of the matter. It's about time things changed in this country. Well, the king means well. The king is irrelevant. This is ridiculous. Was there nowhere better for us? What's the plan, Halifax? The suffocate is all in a crush. Not quite, Tony. His Majesty the King! Mr. Speaker! 
This is no occasion. Why does His Majesty wear robes and the crown of state in this place? It is not fitting. It fits the purpose very well, sir. I apologize for calling you here and ask for your forbearance. This was the only place large enough for both houses, if uh, somewhat crowded. However, I will not keep you long, gentlemen. It is clear to the whole world that there is no agreement between us. We are wasting our time. Lord uh, Chancellor? Your Majesty! I order that this Parliament be dissolved. It will be so enacted, Majesty. This Parliament is at an end. God save the King! That's the plan, Tony. You cunning bastard. It is done? It is done. Parliament dissolved with no warning and no time to move against me. No exclusion bill, no militia bill, no bill of rights. But no money for the king either. You received confirmation from Paris? I did. The treaty is signed. 300,000 will be paid over the next four years. There will be no English alliances with the Low Countries. Not for the next four years. You may tell Louis that France is free to exercise her foreign policy in the Low Countries as she wishes. Mm. You know, my dear, I think that secretly you are a Catholic. <laughs> Otherwise, why fight so hard to keep James by your side and France by your side? <laughs> if it makes you happy, dear Fobbs, then you may... Ow. What is it? Are you hurt? Nope. No, nothing. I'm well. Everything is well. <laughs> Everything's very well indeed. Of course, I... I... My love. <laughs> I don't really think getting rid of the exclusion bill will make any difference in the end. What do you mean? Well, James is so headstrong, so self-righteous, so damned ham-fisted that he won't last four years on the throne. Trust me, I... Charles! Charles! The king is sick! Help! Help! The king is sick! I didn't die of it. Almost died of the doctors, though. In the end, I cured myself. Quinine. Always was a tinkerer. If I hadn't been a king... But then I was. And oddly, whilst before my illness, after, it was all different. Maybe they thought about what they might get instead. After all, I was never a great king, maybe not even a very good king, but I was simply the best king they had to hand. Ashley Cooper and his allies didn't like it one little bit. And though he was never directly connected with the Rye House plotters, it was enough to finish his influence. They liked me. The people had grown fond of their old Roly. So had old death. It came back, the illness. I knew it would. A few good years, and then the bloody doctors again. And then, one night... Oh, a week or two ago, as I lay on my bed of sickness... Who... Who... Oh, not the bloody priests again. Fobbs, is that you? Who else, my love, could it be? I'm so glad. How are you feeling? Damn near done. You have done fine things. <laughs> I've done very little. Maybe that was the secret. And of all the things you have done, what was the best? That would be telling, madam. Barbara. Oh, both of you, together. What do you say, Roly? Got another furlong in you? Still good for a gallop after all these years? I fear, ladies, 
time has undone the monument. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps not. What do we say, my dear? I say full too. And much good may it do him. <laughs> 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 so, now we come to it. They'll tell you I converted to Catholicism at the end. I tell you I die as I have lived, intensely curious, trusting nothing, hoping for the best, fearing the worst, and loving very much. As for the other side... I resolutely hope for nothing. In The Long Lease of Pleasant Days by Mike Walker, Charles II was played by Pip Torrens, James by James Fleet, Anthony Ashley Cooper, Ken Bones, and Halifax by Clive Haywood. Louise was Olivia Ross, Monmouth, Alex Waldman, Barbara, Stephanie Racine, Titus Oates, Matthew Watson, and Catherine was Elaine Claxton. Other parts were played by David Can, Damian Lynch, Michael Burtonshaw, and Mark Edel Hunt. The directors were Mark Beebe and Sasha Yevtushenko.